This time on the show, disaster strikes a RAID Zero, building a time-lapse photography app with the cute SDK, and expanding your storage with a Gmail drive. All that and more this time on Hack5. Yeah. Yeah, hook me up, I'm ready. This episode of Hack5 is brought to you by GoToAssist Express. Support smarter with GoToAssist Express. Domain.com. Got a great idea? It all starts with a great domain. Domain.com. And Nokia and the Calling All Innovators contest. Hello and welcome to Hack5. My name is Darren Kitchen and this is your weekly dose of Technolust. We've got a great show for you guys this week. Shannon's going to be talking about some awesome Windows software. Jason's going to be doing more with the QSDK and I'm having a little fun with well, one of our favorite topics here on the show, and that is desktop virtualization. Actually, this one's more like server virtualization. It's going to be good stuff, you know, a little open source, a little servers, some wine. Actually, before we even get any further, we do have to destroy this box because I'm repurposing some hardware. And as you guys know, I've recently made the switch uh, over to Linux, over to the, uh, the good side. And man, I am having a lot of fun over there and I've got this old Windows box and I'm like, what better way to, uh, to make it breathe some new life than uh, put some, you know, open source virtualization goodness on it. And uh, so uh, let's first start by blowing out the Windows 7 install. And, and that got me thinking, we're actually in a unique opportunity here where I get to destroy some fun stuff software wise. Cause you know, like, like Patrick Norton does it with a sledgehammer and I figured maybe I'd just do it with a BSOD. I know. Let me see if I've got this going on right so you guys can check it out. I want you guys to see this. Check this out. All right, sweet. So this right here is, uh, is a really nifty uh, uh, thing that I advise like everybody go out and get one of these. They're so freaking sweet. This is a, um, it's a three, five and a quarter inch bays that give you four, three and a half inch bays for hard drives. And actually, if you look over here in Windows, you can see I've got a couple of hard drives going on, right? Well, if I go ahead and just like pull like this hard drive right here, because this is all SATA, you know, it's hot swap. Boom, I just pulled a hard drive and it just disappears. How awesome is that? So that got me thinking. This is actually in a RAID 0 configuration. I got two 500 gigabyte drives here that uh, are running this local disk here. You can see 931 gigs total because, yay, a thousand megs is a gig. Not. Come on, guys. Anyway, so. Uh, so I was like, dude, my favorite command, tree. If you haven't run tree, it is like the best command in the world, especially if you're like at the office and you're trying to make it look like you're working, but you're really not. And you need a whole bunch of cool, fun stuff going by on the screen. Uh, just pull up a prompt, cd backslash to your uh, root, run tree, and you have glorious, glorious, uh, pretty, you know, white text on a black background hacker stuff going on all day long or just ping Google tack T. Yeah, anyway, uh, that all said, I was like, dude, what would happen if you were to like, just go ahead and pull half the raid? You know, that's like a disaster scenario that I've never like voluntarily gone ahead and done. Because you know, I've, I've set up raids, uh, or at least raid one or raid five systems in like systems administration kind of scenarios where I'm like deploying some servers and stuff like that. But sometimes on my local desktop, I just like to r run a raid zero, which is spanning multiple drives for that added performance to uh, you know, just go ahead and uh, you know, get the best I can out of my uh, hardware and you know, I've got a backup scheme in place for all that. But, uh, but if, if my entire system is spanned between two drives, if half the drive or half the you know, volume goes, what's gonna happen? And well, let's find out because that's what we do on this show. We can, I'm gonna go ahead and actually uh, buffer the command tree. So I'll just, I'm not gonna hit enter yet. And uh, let's pull up some explorer action over here on the right. Hopefully you guys will actually be able to see this. And uh, yeah, let's pull drive. System disk gone. Okay, so half the drive is gone. Looking in Windows Explorer, everything looks cool. Running tree. Tree is not recognizable as an internal external command operation. Yada yada yada. Not happening. All right, start menu still works. All programs, empty. Okay, that's, that's, oh, mouse is not working anymore. <sighs> well, that's no fun. Is that it, really? Is that how it dies? Like, how anticlimactic, clim there's a word for this. 
It's climactic. Not even a BSOD. Man, I was like really hoping for more. Well, if you guys know of a fun, awesome way to uh, get a BSOD on demand, go ahead and hit up feedback at hack5.org. Uh, we will break out the virtual sledgehammer, if you will, and try it here on the show. But uh, I guess you guys probably tuned in to see some actual tech content, not me just, uh, you know, having fun for shits and giggles with the Windows box. So let's go ahead and kick it over to Shannon for some trivia and get into the good stuff. Last week's trivia question was, certified by the Fair Trade Foundation, this soft drink shares its name with an African philosophy and open source operating system. And the answer is Ubuntu. If you want to win some Hack5 swag this week, go over to hack5.org slash trivia and answer the following question. With over 5,000 free and commercial plugins, this open source content management system was forked from Mambo in August of 2005. We'll be right back after a brief word from our sponsor. If you work with clients and colleagues to resolve computer issues, I have an incredible remote support tool that will make you look like a hero, while saving you time and money and boosting productivity. Go to Assist Express, brought to you by Citrix, lets you easily resolve computer issues in real time or after hours while your customers are away from their computers, allowing you to be more productive. In fact, on average, GoToAssist Express users report a 40% increase in productivity. That's like getting two extra workdays back a week. Hack5 viewers can try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit gotoassist.com slash hack5. That's gotoassist.com slash hak5 for a free trial. You guys know me, I'm always looking for ways to find more drive space because, well, I'm always running out and I don't have the money to buy tons of terabytes. There is this one thing that's been around for quite a while, but it's currently being updated and they keep on updating it again and again, month after month. So I did want to mention it on the show. This is called Gmail Drive Shell Extension and you can find it over at the vixui.dk slash gmail website. And I wanted to give you a brief overview and a short demo about how it works. So it's a shell namespace extension. It basically creates a virtual file system around the Gmail account that you use, and you can use it as a storage medium. You can save and retrieve files that are stored on your Gmail account directly from inside Windows Explorer. So there's no actual need to go online. You can just pop up Windows Explorer where you have your My Computer, and there's, ta-da, a brand new Gmail hard drive that shows up on your computer. It adds this new drive under my computer and you can create new folders, you can copy and drag and drop files just like pretty much any other hard drive on your machine. You get tons of space in Gmail and well myself, I never use it all and there's like 6,000, 7,000 megabytes now and I never fill it up so it's just kind of sitting there available to me and well, I, we might as well take it, right? It's free. So what you do, uh, you can copy files into Gmail and then you can retrieve them again over and over. And when you create a new file you, using the Gmail drive, it generates an email and then it posts it into your inbox with the file as an attachment. So it's kind of like just getting a regular email. The Gmail drive is gonna check your account using the Gmail search function to find any new files. And then it rebuilds the directory structures on that. It acts as if, as if it's any other hard drive, and then it copies, you can copy files to and from it just like normal. So it's very, very simple. On the website, the creator does mention it makes it really easy if you create a filter in your Gmail inbox to move all of your files that start with the Gmail FS in the subject, which is what it's going to say every time that it sends a new file into your inbox. That way you won't have to look through your inbox all the time if you have like 900 different new messages like Darren does, and you'll just have them right there, archived, ready to go, you know, no looking around or wasting time trying to find them. It's an experimental tool, so you may want to remember that the file name has to be under 65 characters, and if Gmail chooses to block the tool at any time, it may not keep on working. Any changes made by, G made by Google to Gmail may also affect the functionality of this tool. So at any time it may quit working, but luckily, the creators of this tool, they keep on updating it. So they try to make it keep on working for us, the users. So here's my short demo. 
Once you have it downloaded, it's very simple to use. You just open up your zip file and you read the quick little setup guide. It just tells you, okay, it's been installed. Go ahead and open up my computer and go to your Gmail drive. So I open up my computer and I log into my Gmail under the Gmail drive. Okay, Hack5 test account. So I'm not gonna have like anything in my inbox. Okay, so I log into that and it's gonna take a few moments to log me in. All right, but once it's logged in, first thing you're gonna see is just this blank folder, just like any other My Computer folder where you don't have any files in it. So now I can just take this and drag and drop any files into it. So I'm gonna drag this logo into there and it's copying and it's still copying. It takes a while. Okay, so once it's done copying, and again, it, it takes a few seconds, so you know, just, I don't know, go grab some yingling or whatever you need to do. You can go into your Gmail account on the other end. So I'll open up my Gmail account right here. Okay, and I see this, that the file has been saved into my inbox. Yay, so easy. Okay, so there's a few pros and cons about this program that I've just demoed. So the pros, it's free storage. I mean, who doesn't like free storage? It's awesome. And it's super easy to use, and it works with pretty much any Windows machine as long as you can get into your Windows Explorer. The cons, it takes forever to copy any files and to log you in. So if you're the only person using your machine, you might as well just make it auto login. It'll save you a little bit of time and it can easily break if Google does any kind of updates to Gmail. So, what are your thoughts on this, or do you have any other free storage spaces? I like those. Email me over at feedback at hack5.org, and we'll be right back after a brief word from our sponsor. Hey, buddy. Why the long face? My friend Frank from the Evil Darknet. Wait, there's an Evil Darknet? I don't know what to get him for the holidays. Oh, I didn't realize you celebrated. Well, who is he? Evil Frank. Hmm. Frank. Evil Frank. He's an Exchange 5 server from Ontario. Oh dear god, that does sound evil. Well, have you thought about getting him a domain name? Like evilfrank.com? Yeah. Yeah, I did it for my sister last year and she loved it. You gotta get your name before it's taken, man. And dude, you are in luck. You can get a .com for less than 10 bucks a year if you go to domain.com and check out with the coupon code HAK5. Great idea. Oh, well, it's the perfect gift for those who have everything. Everything but a domain name. Well, yeah, I, I guess. Get 15% off domain names, virtual private servers, and hosting, or even the new .me domain, and enjoy Domain.com's blistering fast DNS and hosting infrastructure. Simply check out with coupon code HACK5. Got a great idea? It all starts with a great domain. Domain.com. Want a chance to win a new phone? How about a quarter million dollars? Nokia and AT&T have launched the $10 million Calling All Innovators North America contest, challenging app developers and game developers to create the next level of apps for consumers in the US and Canada for the Nokia N8 and OV store using the new Nokia Qt SDK. The contest will have two phases and winners will be selected by app performance in the OV store by a panel of judges. Winners will receive Nokia devices, cash prizes up to a quarter million dollars, and even potentially inclusion in a $1.9 million marketing campaign for their app. So over the next few weeks, we're going to be doing a rundown of how to get started using the Nokia Qt SDK. The ins and outs, if you will, with our old friend Jason Applebaum. And this week, it's a little bit more on building our time-lapse camera application. Last week, we covered the base elements of how to get started, you know, how to create your first kind of application with minimal functionality, but kind of get started with the Qt Creator. And this week, we're gonna dive a little bit further with the time-lapse camera application. So let's get started. But the first thing we're gonna need to do is we're gonna uh, need to upgrade our Qt Mobility uh, SDK because we're ru currently running on 1.0.2 and the the stuff we were looking for the camera API is in the beta version in 1.1.0 it's really simple to upgrade head on over to qt.nokia.com slash product slash cute slash add-on slash mobility and download the cute mobility open source 1.0 zip once that's downloaded I went ahead and unzipped 
it to its own folder, Cute Mobility. So once it's once it's all unpacked in the Cute Mobility, we're looking for a zip file in the zip file. Zip file we're looking for because we're dealing with the Nokia N8. It's you know right here. It's Cute Mobility. Symbian open source 1.1.0 uh, slash beta slash epoch slash Symbian 3. Okay, that was a mouthful. Inside of that zip file is the epoch32 folder. That is what we're going to need in order to upgrade the base Nokia SDK. If you installed the Q Creator just as a standard install, the SDK is located over at Nokia Qt SDK. Symbian SDK. There's the Epoch32 folder that we need to flip for the one in the zip file in the Mobility 1.1 beta pack. Okay, now that that's done, head into the uh, Make Spec or MK Spec and then over into Features and here you're going to find the template or the mobility.prf, the mobility preferences, and we're going to need to get the mobility preferences from the pack and pull into this. It's under here, it's under features, and then it's right here, mobility.prf.template. Go ahead and drop the dot template, replace the one in the Nokia SDK, and you could back it up, switch it to a dot back. Once that's done, you're good to go. Let's go ahead and open up the Qt Creator and get started on our project. So we're back in the UI, we're gonna to need to add a couple things. We're gonna need to add a viewfinder for our camera and a big old start button to get the sucker started. So I just went ahead and dropped a button in called the start, explanation point. And then I added the viewfinder. The viewfinder is in a vertical layout next to everything because the way this is gonna work is you're gonna hit the start button, then it's gonna open the camera view. It's just because it's in beta. Or it's just because the mobility kit is in beta, I should say. So. Once you've got that, let's go ahead and jump on over to the header file. We need to go ahead and include some things. Camera.h or qcamera.h for our camera and qtimer. qcamera.h and the timer. Then what we're going to need to do is go ahead and create a variable for the camera. qcamera, camera, and then qtimer. qcamera is what's going to keep, or qtimer is what's going to keep track of where we currently are and how often it's going to take the picture. Then we're going to need to add two slots. Start camera, take picture. Start camera is for the button and take picture is for when the timer elapses. So let's go ahead into mainwindow.cpp. In mainwindow.cpp what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to first define the timer. So timer equals new queue timer this, passing the parent, passing the parent object. Then what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to connect the signals and slots. So for the start button, connect UI to grab items off of our UI. Start button, the signal is on click and the slot is start camera. Then what we're going to need to do is connect the timer and the take picture. So connect timer signal, it's timed out, and then slot take the picture. So let's go ahead and look at the camera. Camera equals new Q camera, and then camera device. Camera device is just the first device, or first camera I find on the device. And I get that by it's a Q byte array, camera device, and then I am looping through the available devices on the camera, on the phone itself. Then once I find the first one, I'm gonna grab that. After you initialize the camera, you're gonna go ahead and set the capture mode to still images. Once that's done, let's go ahead and take a look down here at start camera, what the big button does. So start camera, all it's gonna do is it's going to turn, take the view from the camera and put it on our view, on our view, on our viewfinder from the UI. Then it's gonna start the camera, so it's gonna start the whole process, then it's gonna start the timer. Number of seconds times a thousand. That's important because the number of seconds is measured in milliseconds here, not actual seconds. So the times a thousand will get you two milliseconds. So let's take a look at the last little thing here, take picture. Take picture is really simple. All I'm doing is calling search lock on the camera. That's the same thing as if you just hold down the, the camera half ham, camera button halfway and it just kind of auto focuses the logic for actually capturing the image isn't in here but it's pretty simple to implement and it's over at the nokia forms 
So then once that's done, all we have to do is start the timer and the process all over again. So let's go ahead and hit the, the, the green button and let's go ahead and take a look at it on the phone. So there you have it, it's on the phone. Go ahead and hit, hit start and it opens up the camera. That's easy, it just go ahead and starts the entire process and takes the picture and does it over and over and over again, a time-lapse camera. So if you have any questions on this segment, email me, jason at hack5.org. Or if you have any questions on Qt or the Qt Creator or anything involving you know, that world, head on over to the Nokia forums, forums.nokia.com. The Nokia Qt SDK brings the popular Qt Creator IDE from the desktop and embedded world to the mobile developers so they can build native apps for the Symbian 3 devices like the Nokia N8. Now, developers can submit their apps by January 28th to be involved, and we just want to thank Nokia for sponsoring today's show. Clean water is one of the scarcest resources in the world. I, for one, take clean water for granted every day. We need it to survive, and yet nearly a billion people just don't have access to it. We want to get involved, so we're partnering with Charity Water to help make a difference. Charity Water is an organization that donates 100% yes, 100% of the money it raises to building wells and bringing clean water to communities in need. They're leveraging technology in really creative ways to mobilize people around the cause, and we want to get you guys, our viewers, involved. Each show on Revision 3 is reaching out to our viewers to raise money to build wells. It takes $5,000 to build a well that can provide clean water to an entire village. So we need your help to make a difference. Go over to revision3.com slash charitywater to learn more and get involved with the cause. And I wanted to thank a couple of our most recent donators, Matthew, Cliff, Shang, Kurt, Thorsten, Mohammed, Anonymous, thank you, and Andrew, thank you so much. Your donations are really helping us out. And if you guys have the Technolust, like Andrew with his adorable Hack5 pumpkin, Make sure to send us your photos over at feedback at hack5.org. And as usual, we have tons of goodies over at hack5.org slash store for you guys to check out. And last but not least, the easiest and fastest way to support your favorite podcast is by subscribing on iTunes and YouTube. Until next week, I'm Shannon Morse. Remember to trust your techno lust. Wow. Wow. Oh my god, I totally had to stop and show you this for just a second because it is absolutely insane. Dude. Look at that. That is like the hugest dust bunny I have ever seen. I mean seriously, I have like a quarter here. I'm gonna put a quarter next to it. Dude, if you think you have a bigger dust bunny than that, email feedback at hack5.org with like dust bunny in the subject line. Maybe we'll put you on the show or something. But that is freaking sick. I haven't opened this machine in like a year. And the thing is totally gonna eat me. Okay. Hmm. Computer. Do. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Computer. Do. 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 Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Computer.